The theme is avoid prosperity gospel because it's not found in the Bible, but yet it's uh, used by many people uh, and it's not supported by the Bible. Okay, so we're going to uh, look at it um, with the perspective from the Bible to study if uh, what does the Bible say about prosperity? Okay, now prosperity theology sometimes referred to as prosperity gospel and also called health and wealth gospel, the gospel of success or seed faith. Um, is a religious belief among some Protestant Christians that financial blessings and physical well-being are always the will of God for them, and that faith, positive speech, and donation to religious causes will increase one's material wealth. Okay, so uh, what it says that is that uh, it's, it's always the will of God to bless people financially and physically. That is what they teach. And they believe that faith and positive speech, faith that they have strong faith that they, you know, very often they would pray for someone and they say, you are healed even uh, though the person doesn't feel being healed. And then they will say, you just believe that you are healed and then you, you'll be healed. And some people keep believing and yet it hasn't come true. So they say that we, if you have faith, then you'll be healed. And positive speech, they always say that, um, always say positive thing. Now, we also teach people to say positive thing, but what they mean is don't name your problems. For instance, if a person has cancer, don't say that you have cancer say that you are healed, you don't have cancer. So basically it's denial. They always say, I don't have a problem. So that is not what the Bible said. For instance, Paul said that he, when the first time he preached, he went to uh, Galatia, he had sickness. And Timothy also has sickness. And Epaphroditus also has sickness. So, uh, you know, in the Bible, Paul admitted that he has sickness. And in different parts of the Bible, it admits that, say that people have sickness. So, uh, admitting our problem doesn't mean it's negative. But they mean what, but when they, uh, what they mean is that if you have sickness and you admit it, then it's negative. So they say, always be positive. Always, never, they say, never admit that you have any problem. Uh, always say you don't have the problem. God has already healed you. And also donation to religious causes will increase one's material wealth. And very often they'll say, okay, you donate a large sum of money, 1,000 US dollars, and then you get many times back. If you ha are in debt, you want money back. You want money that you need, then you... Uh, uh, you uh, give the seed money. They say it's like the seed. Uh, you sow the seed, it will grow out, you know, uh, 100 times, 60 times, 30 times. Now, in the parable of Jesus, he's talking about the Word of God. The Word of God is planted in the heart of people, not money. But they use it to mean money when you have uh, given offering of a certain amount of money, then you get many times the money back. Okay, now, um, so we're going to point out the problem of prosperity gospel and explain what it is. Prosperity gospel concentrates in physical blessings and prosperity. Uh, so they emphasize on physical blessings and prosperity. And, uh, and, you know, and one 
or two pastors have said that God wants you to be prosperous. Now, if it means spiritual prosperous, it's fine. But if they mean physical prosperity, uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily come true. Because even for people who love God, God will provide for them enough, but not necessarily uh, pro uh, prosperous, that they become rich. And also, even spiritual prosperity is promised only to people who have faith in God and have a, a good relationship with God. So when people love God and have a close relationship with God, they spend time with God and then they will have joy and strength and spiritual gifts and strength. Uh, and fruits of their ministry. So, prosperity gospel promised something that the Bible doesn't promise. And we'll look at uh, some of the verses soon. And this is, it concentrates in physical blessings and prosperity. This is contrary to what Jesus said. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is money. So Jesus said you cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and money. You cannot have your goal set on money. But a lot of these preachers, they will say, okay, if you want money, then you give a lot of money. Uh, and also they will say, if people love God, they cannot be poor at all. Now, there are many Christians who in some countries that are poor and they love God. So, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, Christians who love God uh, will always be rich. They can be poor, but they have sufficient that they can uh, use their spiritual gifts for God, that, that they can glorify God and serve God. And Matthew 6, 33, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Here God promised provision and not necessarily prosperity, and all these things will be added to you. So Jesus said that when you seek first the kingdom of God, that you want more people saved, and then you also want uh, God to be your king in your heart. When God is our king, then uh, then we, the heart becomes the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God will dwell in our hearts. And then, so when we seek the kingdom of God, we want more people saved, the first, that we will preach the gospel. And secondly, we want Jesus to be the king in our hearts. That means we let the kingdom of God come into our hearts and to our life, to our family, to our church, to our place of work, to where, wherever we go, then all these things, and also seek His righteousness. His righteousness means that we have the righteousness of Jesus given to us through faith. When we trust in Jesus as our Savior, then He will give us His righteousness. And also, Christians also have our righteousness. When we obey God, then is our righteousness. So, it, seek His righteousness means two things. It's the righteousness of Jesus and also our righteousness when we obey God. And all these things shall be added to you. So when you seek God's kingdom and His righteousness, and these things will be added to you. And uh, Jesus in the context talk about provision. But it doesn't necessarily mean, provision doesn't necessarily mean uh, very rich. And some of these prosperity gospel preachers, they was you know, say, see how much money I have. They, you know, they tell people, give a lot of money and then you'll be rich. And then the first person who get rich are the uh, prosperity gospel preachers. They have a lot of people giving to them. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily come true to those people who give to them, although God will provide for them. But it doesn't necessarily mean that they will be rich. 1 Corinthians 2, nine. I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. Now here God promised unexpected blessings from God. It does not necessarily mean prosperity. So when we love God, then God will prepare for things that the human mind cannot think of. 
He will give us blessings that we cannot imagine. But it doesn't necessarily mean richness and money. And then John 10.10, 10, I have come that you may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Jesus wants us to have abundant life, not necessarily physical prosperous life. So Jesus wants us to have abundant life, but it doesn't mean it's physically abundant. It will be sufficient. But it uh, might not mean, you know, some people are not rich. Some are richer than others, but it doesn't mean that Jesus wants to make everyone rich. Jesus wants everyone to have abundant life. But this abundant life only comes to people when people love God and have a close relationship with God and obey Him and serve Him. So when people love God and have a close relationship with Him, then they'll have joy and strength and spiritual gifts and opportunities to use their spiritual gifts to serve God. And then God will reward them. So this abundant life, firstly, it means spiritual blessings and it, can, it also means provision. But provision is that so he has enough to uh, serve God, that he has enough provision to serve God. Okay, God's blessing. So, so what does the Bible teach about God's blessing? It includes peace, love, joy, and provision, physical provision, but not necessarily rich, uh, being rich physically, and spiritual gifts, and opportunities to serve God, and reward for our good works. So God promised to give us spiritual life, that we'll have the spiritual life, and then we'll have the spiritual fruit, and we can bring people to Christ. And then He will also provide for those who love Him. And provision does not necessarily mean prosperity. Provision means enough so that we can enter God's perfect plan. Okay, God's blessings are promised to those who trust in God and have a close relationship with Him and obey Him and serve Him. So, God's blessings are promised to those who love Him and obey Him. Not necessary to every Christian. There are Christians who have all kinds of problems. They fight in their family. They even have divorce. They, they are fired by people because they don't, uh, they don't have a good Christian life and they don't work well and they, they are irresponsible. They drink and they are out of control. So some of these Christians, they, they believe in Jesus, but they don't live out the faith that they have. Then there is something wrong with the faith. Then they won't receive the blessings. We only receive the blessings when we trust in God and love God and obey Him. Okay, and then, so we can say God wants us to enter His perfect plan. So we don't say God wants you to be prosperous. We, want God, we can say God wants you to enter His perfect plan. When we enter His perfect plan, then our lives are blessed both spiritually and physically. But the physical blessings does not guarantee prosperity. So when we love God and obey Him and serve Him, He will bless us spiritually and also physically so that we have enough to, to serve God. Um, some people say, well, what is enough? Enough means that we have enough food and strength and provision for us so that we can start to serve God and bless other people that our life will be used by God, that we can have joy every day. Now, we don't necessarily have to become rich in order to have joy. We can have joy even when we don't have a lot of money. But when we can serve God joyfully, we can bless people joyfully, then we can have spiritual uh, joy. We have joy in the Lord. And Philippians 1.29, For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in Him, but also to suffer for His sake. So all Christians have a share of suffering. So here, here Paul said that it has been granted to you, given to you by grace. Now the original word is uh, granted in grace, not only to believe in Jesus, but also to suffer for His sake. So it has been granted to us that we can suffer for Him. 
And when we suffer for Him, Jesus will remember it, and then Jesus will reward us. So suffering is also a part of Christian life. So it doesn't necessarily mean that we are all rich, but it means that we have spiritual strength, and then we could have suffering. And some Christians even spend a lot of time in prison or even killed, but they have the spiritual strength in them. They experience the joy of the Lord, the strength of the Lord, that when they trust in God, when they continue, even when they are in prison, they continue to praise God and love God and obey Him and trust that when they suffer, God will remember their suffering and God will reward them. Then they have a lot of strength and then they will, uh, be, uh, they will be blessed by God. Okay, and then um, instead of saying that God wants us to make sure we prosper, and have good success and happiness because that's what uh, a pastor said he said that God wants to make sure we prosper and have good success and happiness that is not true God doesn't want to to make sure that everyone have good success and happiness uh, God only wants to provide for us for those who love him okay those who don't love him doesn't God doesn't want to give prosperity to them. God doesn't want to give good success to them. So actually you read in the Bible, the Bible doesn't tell us to pursue prosperity. So we should not use the word pros prosperous. Uh, we should not say God wants you to be prosperous. Unless if we mean spiritual pro prosperity. You know, God wants you to have abundant life. That is a biblical word that God wants you to have, uh, have abundant life in Christ and, and you also have abundance so that you can give to other people. And we should say God wants to, us to enter His perfect plan so that God's name is glorified and God's will is done. So God wants us to enter His perfect plan. You know, it's not God's will that every Christian is prosperous but He wants us all to enter His plan so that His name is glorified and God's will is done. When we have a close relationship with God, He will give us joy and when we enter His perfect plan, He will give us enough resource and strength so that we can go higher in God's plan. The Bible does not say that He makes sure that we will all prosper and have good success. So. The Bible doesn't say that. He makes sure that we all prosper and have good success. And joy is only promised to those who have a close relationship with God and put down the burden. So all the blessings of God are promised to those who love Him and obey Him. And the promises are that they will have joy and strength and spiritual gifts and, and also reward from God. And God doesn't promise that they will be prosperous physically. So very important teaching is that when we cannot find clear uh, Bible passages explaining a teaching, please don't say that the Bible teaches it. The Bible does not teach prosperity gospel. So don't say that the Bible teaches that, that we all will be prosperous, that God wants us to be prosperous. The Bible doesn't say that. So. Uh, we have to be very careful, but it's attractive to many people because they want to be rich. They want a lot of money. So the heart is on mammon, which Jesus warns us not to pursue mammon, but they pursue mammon. So it becomes attractive to many people. Okay, so uh, avoid prosperity gospel and avoid prosperity gospel preachers when they always just talk about that you'll be rich when you donate a lot of money it's not from God it's from you know their own teaching their own for their own selfish benefit that they will get a, get a lot of uh, offering now it, we should offer to God and we believe that and we know that God will bless us but we don't give in order to get money back from God even when God doesn't give us money back we thank God we don't say, God, you did not give to me. God will give to us in His time. And also what He gives to us is not necessarily physical blessings. 
He could give us spiritual blessings and also reward forever.